Let's talk uh, Supreme Court for a moment. So there are growing calls for the DOJ to investigate Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas over gifts that he received from Republican billionaire Harlan Crow. Uh, this is coming after ProPublica first reported last week that Thomas failed to disclose lavish gifts that he received from Crow. The publication advanced its reporting on Thursday, revealing that Justice Thomas also did not disclose that Crow bought property from him. ProPublica noting it is the first known instance of money flowing from Crow to the Supreme Court justice and that Crow purchased three properties in a residential neighborhood in Savannah, Georgia for more than $130,000 belonging to the relatives of Clarence Thomas, including the justice's elderly mother's home, who, by the way, still lives at that property and which Crow still owns. Now, Senator Sheldon Whitehouse and Congressman Hank Johnson are calling on Attorney General Merrick Garland to investigate. Back with me now, MSNBC legal analyst and former U.S. attorney, Joyce Vance. All right, Joyce, um, let's talk through some of this stuff. You pointed to a tweet by Chris Moran at ProPublica uh, saying this. A key thing to understand about the undisclosed real estate deal. Thomas made many other disclosures that year. Teaching fees, travel reimbursement, a $530 stained glass medallion, but not the property sale to Crow. Talk to me more about this, Joyce, and how this is an important, shall we say, outtake of what it is that Crow did not, um, not excuse me, not Crow, Clarence Thomas did not um, disclose and what laws he may have broken. Right, it's an important omission from his disclosure forms. You're required uh, when you're in any government position, I did these sort of forms to extensively list these sorts of things. And the importance of the omission of this one item is that Thomas had actually included uh, some of the property he owned on earlier forms. And then he doesn't document the sale here and the amounts of money he received or the fact that Harlan Crow continues to deal with upkeep on the residents. So there's a lot of reason to believe that when these uh, sorts of deals aren't disclosed in the middle of other disclosures, that there's something that the person who fills the forms mm -hmm. out is trying to hide. And federal criminal law reflects that it's a violation of 18 U.S. Code 1001 to make a false statement to the government. And there are other uh, sorts of violations that are pertinent to this sort of a form and the failure to complete it honestly, I don't think we should jump to the conclusion that DOJ will investigate or prosecute. I think it's a, a long way from here to there. But technically, what the justice did here is a violation of law that could be investigated. Talk to me about kind of the calculations, if you can, that the DOJ makes when deciding to pursue an investigation like this one that would focus on a Supreme Court justice. Well, you would do it if there's probable cause to believe, not even probable cause. You just have to have a reasonable suspicion that a crime has been committed to open the file and to begin to investigate. And you would need to have a, a good faith belief. It was something that you would have jurisdiction over it. For instance, this happened a long time ago. Maybe it's outside of the statute of limitations or maybe it's an ongoing violation that DOJ should be looking at. There's a good comparison. A Supreme Court justice in the late 1960s was investigated by DOJ. In that case, he was receiving some ongoing payments from someone who um, dealt in the securities market, who happened to be under investigation himself. But the financial arrangement that Justice Fortas had wasn't particularly different from similar relationships other justices at that point in time had with other individuals. Mm. Nonetheless, he falls under suspicion. There's some suggestion that this is some sort of a scheme for the person paying him to avoid prosecution for the investigation he's involved in. And Justice Fortas steps down rather than being prosecuted. So that, I think, is what the landscape here most likely would look like. There's also the option of impeaching a justice or a judge if they're believed to have violated some laws. So I also want to ask you, um, Joyce, while I have you, about Evan Corcoran. Um, this just breaking from The Washington Post in the last few hours or so now, recusing himself from the Mar-a-Lago um, documents um, case, um, attorney for the former president um, of the United States, because he testified in front of a federal um, grand jury. What do you make of this most recent development? 
Well, this is a long overdue step. It's been very puzzling uh, to see Evan Cochran, who, who knows better, continuing to represent the former president of the United States in a criminal case where Corcoran is a, a material witness. Their interests are adverse. Uh, he shouldn't be working for Trump in that case. And this simply reflects the reality of his situation. All right, Joyce Vance Forrest, as always, my friend, great to see you.